Welcome to the Make It Happen with Will Polston podcast. These podcast episodes with Will and his guests provide you with insights on how you can transform your excuses into results to benefit yourself, your family, your friends, your community, society, humanity, and the universe with what Will calls the ripple effect. Will's mission is to empower 1 billion people via the ripple effect and intends that you'll become a Another person to add to the count, having listened to this episode. Hello, and welcome to Make It Happen with Will Polston. I'm Will Polston. This is episode number 60. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about how confidence is built, not got. And the, the reason we're going to be talking about this is because I was on, uh, I was interviewed on a podcast uh, with Elliot Kay earlier this week, and we were talking about the subject of confidence. And I shared some really great stuff, I must admit. I'm going to be biased, but I, I shared some really great stuff. And I thought, you know what? I've not even done an episode on confidence on my own podcast. So here we are. So thanks, Elliot. It's thanks to you that everybody is now hearing this on the Make It Happen with Will Polston show. So yeah, look, um, we're going to be talking about the, the truth about being confident. We're going to be talking about what confidence is. We're also going to be talking about how you can build your confidence. So I, I definitely hear a huge amount, and it's an excuse that I hear a lot, as to why people don't achieve what it is that they would like to is because they feel that they don't have the confidence. And obviously excuses come in so many different forms, but confidence is, is definitely one that can be uh, be overcome like so many others. And um, essentially, when it comes down to um, people not doing certain things, a lot of the time when they're talking about the confidence is what people will think of them. So before I really go into the steps as to how to build your confidence, I'd like to explain the difference between confidence and arrogance. So for me, confidence is having self-belief to accomplish a task no matter what, whereas arrogance is having the belief that you're or one is better than others. And it's important to understand this because from the outside, it can actually look very similar. So take, for example, one of the, the greatest boxers of, all, boxers of all time, Muhammad Ali. Many regarded him as a very arrogant boxer, but if you think about it and his famous slogan, which was, I am the greatest, it was a confidence that he possessed about himself rather than saying, I am better than you. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sure at certain press conferences and things, he would say, I'm better than other people. But what it was really about was the internal dialogue that he was having. He operated from a place of self-belief in his own abilities. And that, I think, is, is so important. I, I do believe that every single one of us have a natural level of uh, of, of confidence uh, like if you look at little children they have a uh, an element uh, of, of confidence and then what happens is at certain points things get said to them or they get told certain things or they 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 have experiences which then chip away at that confidence because they they they, they experience some of the the pains of what can happen but um, we're going to talk about that and how we can overcome that in in just a second um, so like I say, confidence for me is built, it is a skill, right? It is a skill and it can be built in a number of different ways. So let's let's start with how it's built in the form of language. So I don't mean necessarily the, the words that we tell other people, but it's the language we use ourselves. Language has an incredible influence on how we act. The internal dialogue, what's going on in between our ears has a huge impact. And a lot of the time when I say to people, well, what makes you think you're not confident? It's because the story that they're telling themselves is telling them they can't do something. So there's a couple of little techniques that I'm going to use to start to highlight how you can start to make change. Now, first of all, was one of my favorite called the butt flip. So let's say, for example, um, you wanted to promote your business but you don't like speaking in front of people. So you would say, I want to promote my business, but I don't like speaking in front of people. Now, if we just flip that sentence for up to uh, around the word but to then say, I don't like speaking in front of people, but I want to promote my business, it's the same words, but by flipping them around the word but, it gives it a different meaning and it creates a different essence. So the language that we use from ourselves is a really powerful way. Let's use another example. So people, let's use the power of the word yet. So you might say, I'm no good at spelling versus 
I'm no good at spelling yet. Um, so or I'm not good at spelling yet. By simply adding yet to the end of the sentence, you're presupposing you'll be better in the future, therefore giving yourself the opportunity to grow rather than it being a statement of fact that you can't do something. So changing the language that you're using. Another word that I love using is the word becoming. So a lot of people, they use affirmations and they'll say things like, yeah, I am powerful. I am an incredible artist. I am an incredible business person, whatever it might be. I am an incredible athlete. But then they hear the little voice in their head that's saying, no, you're not. No, you're not. You, you can say this, but then you hear, no, you're not. Whereas if you say, I am becoming an incredible artist, or I am committed to becoming an incredible artist, I am committed to being an incredible athlete, that change in language that you're using internally will start to change the aura of confidence that you have around yourself. The second thing that you can do is adjust your physiology. Our physiology is one of the two main contributors to our emotional state. And using our body correctly, it can enable us to feel more confident. So if I was to ask you right now, wherever you, whether you're, whether you're listening to this or um, uh, driving or walking somewhere or in the gym, whatever you're doing, if I was to ask you to move into a confident pose right now, so get put wherever you are right now, as you're listening to this, get into a confident pose. I'm confident that you'll, it's highly likely that your head will be up, your shoulders will be broad, your back will be straight. And if I was to ask you to move into a less confident pose, it's highly likely that your head would be down, your shoulders would be drooped, and inwards your back would be curved. So it's really important to understand our physiology and putting our body in and, and moving our physiology to change our psychology. Because the same way our psychology can change our physiology, our physiology can also change our psychology. And there's an incredible social psychologist called Amy Cuddy who did um, a, a TEDx talk on this, which if you go on YouTube, you can search this called How Your Body Language May Shape Who You Are. I highly recommend that you check it out. So if you want to become more confident, if you want to go and do something, you're about to walk into a meeting, um, or you're going to get on uh, uh, and you're going to have to go and do something or have a conversation or even make that phone call. Changing your physiology before you go and make that call or do that activity is going to have a huge impact on how you show up in terms of your confidence. Uh, the next thing in terms of building your confidence is, is regularly stepping out of your comfort zone. Because if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got, which basically that means that you're going to have to have uh, you're going to have to move out of your comfort zone. And what most people don't realize is that you don't have to go straight from your comfort zone to your panic zone. You can operate through and in what I call the stretch zone, which is sort of in the middle of both. So if you can imagine a dartboard, you've got your comfort zone, which is like the bullseye, let's say. Then you've got the stretch zone. And then on the outside, you've got the panic zone. And small progress is something that's going to have a significant impact. I, I liken it a lot of the time to an elastic band. If you imagine an elastic band in its relaxed state, it has next to no use. If you put it under a bit of tension, all of a sudden it's got use. You could use it to fire at people. You could use it to hold things. Um, stretch it too far and it's going to snap. So, if But if we keep stretching it and then relaxing it, stretching it, relaxing it, stretching it, relaxing it, what's going to happen is eventually the relaxed state of the elastic band is going to grow. And that's like your, your natural confidence level. If you stretch yourself and then go back, stretch yourself and go back, what's going to happen is your level of confidence or, or your, uh, your your circle of confidence, let's call it, is going to continue to expand as a result of the action that you're taking. So let's take public speaking, for example. If you wanted to do that in front of 30 people, you might start by just doing that same talk to yourself, reading it from paper, then doing it by recording it for yourself, then doing it in front of a couple of people that you feel really close with and, um, and feel comfortable with, like your family, for example. Then maybe doing it in front of five or 10 people that you don't know. Then gradually working your way up to 30 30 or 50 people. This is just an example of how you could work, work, operate in your comfort zone. And there's lots of ways of doing that to build your confidence, to reinforce the work that you've already done by putting that action in place. Now, that said, when you're taking that action, it's important to understand that the next principle, which is there is no such thing as failure only feedback. All there is is useful results. The, the failures, in inverted commas, are feedback that we need to correct our way towards the desired outcome that we're looking at. So we can use it as a feedback mechanism to do things differently. Now, um, we could give it the, the negative label of the, the shortfalls of success, 
or alternatively we could simply view it as a positive um information bit of information to enable us to to seek revision or improvement and that's something you can definitely do with your confidence so essentially you can operate from the place of that you're either growing or learning you know all you're ever doing is growing or learning Uh, the, the next way of building your confidence is repetition now taking action is great if you you want to be confident but it's not going to be good enough as i explained build building confidence is a skill and repetition is the mother of skills we want to keep building that repetition and persistence are really 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 important and my adaptation of one of aristotle's quotes is we are what we are willing to do therefore true confidence is not an act but repetition and keep building that into what it is that you're looking to do and then finally is environment so our environment has Uh, the ability to influence our behaviors both positively and negatively and the skill here is identifying if you're in an environment that current is that that encourages you to develop if you're in an environment that um that's enabling you to develop then that's obviously going to impact your your confidence and it's going to benefit you um and this includes being in a physical environment of being around the people that enable you to build your confidence um rather than being in the environment of those that are just going to shut you down with their comments and opinions so for for me not it's not i I need to stress this it's not always about only ever getting support sometimes getting challenge is really good if it's constructive like i'm constantly looking for criticism right but constructive criticism if i'm not doing something as well as i could be doing and someone's seeing that then i want to know that i want to know that information i want that feedback and the certain trusted people that i ask to regularly give that or to to that to me or um i i give them full autonomy to say hey look if you ever catch me doing or acting or being in a particular way that is not congruent with my values and they're aware of my my values are i want you to call me out on it you know because what that does is it helps me stay aligned and i can have the confidence that other people have got my back and that, that i'm moving forward in that direction and having that supportive peer group is so 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 important so there you have it there's a few skills that you can work on now if you want to look at building your confidence and you maybe don't have that peer group and you don't have that ability to grow then one of the things that i highly recommend that you do is check Check out one of our services called the Evolve Network. So the Evolve Network is something that we've run for many, many years now, since 2016, and we've just relaunched in a new way, and we're going to be running our events online. We've actually just had our relaunch event um, a few days before me recording this podcast, and it was phenomenal. So at each event, we have an event on the last Wednesday of every month uh, here in the UK, so at uh, 7 p.m. GMT. And it goes on for about two and a half hours. We have two celebrity speakers, one of which is a world-class celebrity expert. And we, we use the event to not only learn from these speakers, but also to break out and have those, those uh, connect with other peer group, you know, with, with other positive-driven, like-minded people. So you have that peer group that you can start to build and, uh, and connect with. Um, you get access to all my online resources. You get allocated a coach. You get a private Facebook group. There's loads of benefits. And you also get allocated a coach, like I mentioned, that you can check in with in between the events. So if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about how the Evolve Network could benefit you and be able to really upskill your personal development as well as be around hundreds of positive, driven, like-minded people, then check the link out in the comments and find out a little bit more about the Evolve Network. But look, that that's it with regards to uh, the, the truth about being confident. Confidence confidence is built, not got. Remember to be focusing on your language, your physiology, stepping out of your comfort zone, focusing on the fact that there's no such thing as failure, only feedback. Be repeti- uh, Focus on repetition. And then finally, make sure you've got an environment that's going to enable you to, to thrive um, in, in the appropriate way. So I hope you found that of value. If you have, please leave a review um, and uh, and let us know. Until next time, make it happen. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Make It Happen with Will Polston podcast. Make sure you join Will's free Facebook group, the Make It Happen community. Please support the show by subscribing on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or Google Play. Share this episode with at least one friend you think would benefit from it and give Will a five-star review wherever you download your podcasts. 
Until next time, make it happen.